Question for you. Can you draw out a schematic of the brachial plexus? Or even the lumbar plexus for that matter? Or can you tell me where I'd find the superior and inferior colliculi? Or can you name all the branches of the facial nerve and all the muscles that it innervates? Or can you tell me the structures that comprise the border of the cubital fossa? Or scarpus triangle for that matter? On and on and on I could go with all these things. Now I'm not trying to scare you, and I'm not trying to impress you either because there's a lot of gross anatomy I'd have to brush up on if I went back into gross anatomy. What I'm trying to do is paint a picture of the fact that gross anatomy is a heck of a course and you need to crush it because it can really set the tone for the rest of PT school and help you out again as you get into the clinics. So today I'm gonna to give you six great tips that can really help you out with that. So let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I hope you're doing well. Hey, if you haven't met me before, my name's Jim. I'm a physical therapist and man, I love what it is that I do for a living. I also love helping other individuals become PTs themselves and helping the general public in any way I can by providing whatever knowledge and expertise I can that is beneficial to them. So if that sounds like you in either of those two categories, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you're getting all the content that I'm putting out. All right, now today we're talking all about gross anatomy. And before I get into these tips, I just wanna talk about why this whole course and doing well in it is such a big deal. Now there's a couple of reasons that we gotta break this all down. So here we go. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about with gross anatomy and why it's so important to do so good in it is the fact that it's a heavy course. It's often like six credits. And so it comprises a hefty chunk of your GPA and your grade. And again, you need to do good in PT school. And the other thing to add on top of that is that your level of anatomy knowledge in PT school will determine how smooth of a ride you have for the rest of PT school to a very large extent. It's, it's absolutely true. I can promise you that. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the fact that you take all these courses in PT school and so many of them rely on your underlying anatomical knowledge for these other courses. So you take courses like functional anatomy or kinesiology, or you take orthopedics or neuro rehab and all these things, those courses all work off an assumption that you have good anatomical knowledge to now solve the problems that are being presented to you in these classes. You're learning these topics that are about different types of injuries and conditions and what structures are affected and what's going on. But what's happening here is these courses, if you don't understand the underlying anatomical knowledge and principles going on, you are not gonna be able to do all these courses because you can't take that knowledge and apply it to the next level of thinking with what's going on for the factors and concepts in those courses. So again, if nothing else, you need to know that the more anatomical knowledge you have, the better off you'll do in PT school for the vast majority of your courses. Keep that in mind. All right, it's also important to keep in mind that gross anatomy moves at a blistering rate. And typically you're taking other courses while you're also taking gross anatomy. So between having just a ton of material that you're trying to take in in a super quick amount of time, and unless you're doing some type of summer block course where you're only doing anatomy then, you're likely taking other courses as well, and it's a whole lot to take in. So I want you guys to do really, really good in this, and in order to do that, you have to have some study tips that work for you. Now that being said, the tips that I'm gonna give you today, they are nothing more than just the tip of the iceberg, if there's other tips or factors that you think are really helpful that other people should know about, please leave them in the comment section below because you can really help other people out because I can't certainly address every single tip or piece of insight in the world in a YouTube video. All right, we're getting right into it now. We're going with tip number one and you guys are in for a treat because if you know anything about my videos, you know that I typically like saving, saving my favorite factor or tip or piece of information until the end but today this one is so important that I'm just putting it right out there as number one. So tip number one, you need to build your anatomy foundation and your anatomy knowledge as much as you can before you're even in gross anatomy. It is never too early to start working on your anatomy knowledge. If you did great in undergraduate anatomy, that's cool, but again, that just scratches the surface for what you have to know for gross anatomy. So if you're not in gross anatomy yet, maybe you just got accepted to PT school and you're wondering what you can do, to prepare, man, start knowing your anatomy. Pick something, 
start studying it. When you get sick of that, switch to something else. If it's anything on the body, you have to know it for gross anatomy. Any muscle and its insertions and origins, the nerve innervations, the nerves themselves, you even have to know blood vessels, you have to know all the features of bones. Anything is fair game. So pick something, start going at it, because again, that will serve you better. The more you know heading into that course, the less time you have to spend learning that stuff that you could have already learned coming into it. So I can't stress the importance of tip number one the most. It is the most important thing out of all these tips. It is never too early to start studying your anatomy. I'm on a tangent now, but I want you guys to do good. And one of the best ways that you can help yourself and you will thank yourself is start studying your anatomy as soon as you can. There is never any negative consequence to knowing more and more anatomy. Pick something, learn it, start going at it. You'll thank yourself. All right, tip number two. Also really, really important. I want you guys to get in the gross anatomy labs as much as you can for the whole entire semester. Now you're gonna have your designated hours when you're heading in there as part of your course requirements. That's gonna happen a couple of times a week. But in addition to that, there's gonna be open lab hours where again, you can just go in and look at the cadavers and again, get more practice identifying structures and features and gaining more confidence. Now in those open lab hours, you're usually not doing your dissections. That's for your actual specific lab hours for the course, but any open hours, whether in the evening or the morning, if you can make them work, get in there. I know you're gonna be tired of smelling like a cadaver and smelling cadavers and all of that. I get it, I've been there before, but you'll thank yourself because again, when you get into your bell ringer examinations where they're putting pins in all the different parts of the cadavers and you have to go around from station to station and identifying all those structures and features, that goes quick. And if you can't rapid fire those answers by identifying things instantly, you can be in a world of trouble as you move from station to station, not knowing exactly what it is that you're looking at. Get in there as much as you can. The semester will not last forever. You will thank yourself. And the other thing you need to keep in mind here is this is an amazing time to, again, take as much of the cadaver time as you can, because when you graduate PT school, it's hard to find ways to get back into cadaver labs and start looking at these structures and features again. It's certainly not impossible, it's doable, but it is challenging. So just make the most of the time, guys. The semester won't last forever. So just get in there, learn as much as you can. You will thank yourself afterwards. It gets old, yes, I know, but it'll be worth it. So get in the cadaver labs as much as you can. Okay, tip number three. Now you're learning a bazillion and a half things when you're in gross anatomy. And what I want you to understand here is there's probably gonna be some structures and things, some features that once you're done gross anatomy, you're never even gonna really have to think about again. But I want you as much as you can to learn those things, but also realize that, hey, I need just to know those things for this course. And I'm gonna spend as much time as I can once I've got those figured out, focusing on my musculoskeletal and neurological anatomy on the cadavers. So an example of this is for a lot of schools, you have to go through a lot of visceral anatomy as well, especially if you have med school students or PA students who are in the labs with you. You might all be learning the material together. So you go over all the visceral contents and all the, the different arteries to those visceral contents. As a PT, it's not something you're gonna have to worry about once you're kind of out in your PT clinical environment for your career. Yes, you have to know it for gross anatomy, but aside from that, take the things that you know you're gonna to need to know inside and out for the rest of PT school and the things that will really help you for your career and really drive those home, right? Everything about muscles, everything about ligaments, origins and insertions and nerve innervations. Focus on those as much as you can because that will give you the, the dividends that are really, really gonna be beneficial. Think of it as a return on investment. Focus on those things because you'll get a great return on investment. Just make sure that you know the underlying things you need to know for the visceral and these other things that aren't as important. You still need to know them for that course. But with that being said, make sure you're focusing on your other important anatomical features. Okay, tip number four. You need to find ways of studying that work best for you. You cannot be concerned about whether it looks silly or it seems weird, or maybe you have a weird way of memorizing something. Who cares? If it works for you, take it and run with it. Different people learn and memorize things different ways. You make up different mnemonics. You, you do whatever you have to do. At the end of the day, it's not stupid if it works. 
You don't even have to tell other people how you're memorizing things or learning things. There's gonna be different ways that work for different people. You need to be confident in the ways that work for you. For me, for a lot of rote memorization, I would just take out, you know, things and write them on a whiteboard, origins and assertions and actions and everything else about a feature. And I would do that and then once the board was filled, I would literally wipe it clean and I would just do it all over again. And a lot of that just worked for me. I would also take time where I would actually, for certain concepts, I would be, not concepts I should say, but for certain features I would study with a partner who could quiz me. A lot of times I did good studying by myself, but a lot of times it worked good to have a partner just bounce information back and forth where we could quiz each other. That seemed to really help too. So find the things that work for you, take them and run with them. It's not stupid if it works. Okay, tip number five. Now, this is gonna sound like a pretty straightforward one, but it's worth driving home here. Use technology to your advantage. So think about the world that we live in right now. You have all sorts of amazing apps for medical information, websites for free medical information, websites and apps that are designed to help you study better. Find those, utilize them, use them to your advantage, right? There's things like Essential Anatomy and Complete Anatomy by 3D4 Medical, amazing apps that I relied on heavily, not just in gross anatomy, but through PT school as well. Still use them in the clinic a lot right now. Um, there's other things too, like using Quizlet, right? To make virtual flashcards for just quizzing yourself through repetition in those manners. There's a bajillion different apps and study, uh, study features that you can use to help you. So get out there, look for some of them, ask other classmates what they're using, see what works for them, and then start to take some of those things. And if they're working for you, take them and run with them. We have amazing access to technology. And again, if you think about the fact that what's available to us out there, oftentimes for free and from reputable people, can really make a big difference. There's great YouTube channels of people giving all sorts of anatomical breakdowns on things by doctors and these ortho surgeons and other reputable, pe reputable people. So get out there, find the apps and the technology, use it in ways that's gonna work for you because it can make a massive difference. Okay, now tip number six. This doesn't directly apply to while you're in gross anatomy, but it's so important that I wanted to include it. Once you get done gross anatomy, keep studying and reviewing your anatomy as often as you can for all things pertaining to musculoskeletal and those types of features. It will benefit you immensely while you're in PT school. It will help with so many other courses and it will help while you're on your clinical rotations and even in the clinic as a practitioner. So just because you're done gross anatomy, don't think that you have to study it anymore. Your study time and your study volume with it is gonna be less because you're focusing on other courses after. But just focus on big important things with anatomy. Make sure you're always brushing up on them. It can only serve to help you, it will never hurt you. That you that I can promise to you. So keep brushing up as often as you can on the big things that are gonna pay dividends for you for the rest of PT school and while you're in the clinic. Okay everyone, so we rifled through all those. I hope you got something out of it. Again, if there's tips or insight or information you wanna share with others that I didn't cover, leave it in the comment section below or maybe some of the apps or websites or technology that's working good for you that you wanna share with others. Put it down below, it will help people and that's what this channel is all about. So I'm leaving it at that for today. Everyone, I hope you're doing well. Please keep taking care of yourselves. Keep working hard. I'm sure you're making good things happen. And again, hard work is beautiful because hard work works. Keep that in mind. I hope you're feeling confident about heading into anatomy or if you're in anatomy, that again, you're knowing that again, it's possible to crush this. You have to give your best efforts, but it is well worth it. I'm leaving it at that. Everyone take care of yourselves. I hope you're doing well and I will see you in the next video.